Good morning so far. Can't complain. Good morning, Carol. time of year so I'm sure you're all a little bit busy with holiday preparation for me so I think every morning is, um, is for me I don't love mornings but um, I am starting to get used to them a bit myself in the habit of getting to bed a little earlier getting up a little earlier um, to pray and whatnot and just to have that time so getting ready for the new year early morning prayer times and so kind of getting myself in that right place but this, so I'm going to pray before we start and then after I pray I'm going to read a little excerpt um, from a devotional, so I'm just going to get into that right now. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for all the people who are able to be here online with us and those who watch later. We pray that um, you would speak to us this morning, that we'd um, just have a, a good time in you, uh, in your word, and a good time in prayer this morning, that you would be with us, that you would uh, give me the words to say this morning, that you would have your way in all of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read a little bit. Um, the lighting in this room is not the best. I put uh, I put a new light bulb in, but one would not come out. So I have to uh, cry it out later. So I'm going to um, we'll begin reading now. <clears throat> the Nuremberg War crime trials were trials of some of the most wicked men who ever lived. These men were responsible for the deaths of six million Jews during the Holocaust. One of those men, Adolf Elkman, uh, Elkman or Eichmann, Eichmann, I mean, who killed millions of people, in the concentration camp during World War II. Holocaust survivor Yehiel Diner witnessed Eichmann's trial. He entered the, the, the courtroom and started and, and stared at Eichmann behind a bulletproof, behind bulletproof glass. The courtroom was hushed as victims confronted the, their butcher. Diner began to sob and collapsed onto the floor. Many assumed he was overcome by anger or bitterness. But Denner later explained to Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes that he had been overtaken by, her, by a horrific realization 
I was afraid about myself, he said. I saw that I am capable to do this. I am exactly like Eichmann. Wallace concluded the segment with these thoughts. How was it possible for a man to act as Eichmann acted? Was he a monster, a madman, or was he perhaps something even more terrifying? Was he normal? He closed, he closed, um, he closed by telling the viewers that Eichmann is in all of us. In a moment of chilling clarity, Yehiel Dinner saw beneath the, beneath the skin, we are not morally neutral. We've often heard the question, why do good people do bad things? The more appropriate question is, why do bad people do good things? As Augustine said, my sin was all the more incurable because I did not think myself a sinner. Very powerful um, little thing to, to read this morning. Um, and it's true. He walks into the courtroom and he sees the man who's killed so many of um, Jews. And he was and, and under in that moment, probably seeing him had these urges or just desire to just destroy that man. And in that moment, he falls down crying, realizing that I am just like him. I'm capable of doing the same things. Um, I'm a sinner just like he is. And it's true of all of us that we're all sinners. We all have issues. In, in Romans chapter 7, Paul deals with this pretty heavily. And um, just like he did in chapter 6. So we're going to talk about that issue of sin again. A little bit different standpoint today. Um, but it is important. And at the end there, that little quote that I read is that the, the reason why sometimes our sin isn't curable. Even as Christians. Sometimes as Christians we have things that we're doing that are not right. That are against God's law. That are sinful by nature. And sometimes we're willingly doing it, knowing it's wrong. Um, and that's just, um, again, that flesh nature we battle with. We have to eventually stop giving into it. But there's this um, sin nature that we wrestle with. And all of us wrestle with it. And so in Romans chapter 7, it's a personal thing for Paul. And we're, so we're going to read, starting with verse number 9. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came to life and I died. In other words... That before the law, they didn't know the difference between what was right and wrong. They didn't know what was sin and what wasn't sin. But once the law was in place and the commandments were in place, they started realizing that what I'm doing is sin and wrong, and it leads to death. And so that's kind of what he's talking about there. And this commandment, which was to result in life, proved to result in death for me. For sin taking an opportunity through the commandment deceived me, and though it, though it killed me, so then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, and righteous and good. So the law is not a bad thing. And I think it's important too. We sometimes write off the law. It's the Old Testament. We're not under the law anymore. It's not It's not good. But the law is how we knew the difference between right or wrong. It's God's law still. Um, God's law didn't change. It's just he gave us a new covenant with Jesus that allowed us to um, be forgiven of the falling short of that law, right? So there's a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament there. So verse number 13, therefore did uh, did that which is good become cause of death for me? Far from it. Rather, it was sin in order that it might be shown to be sin by bringing about my death through that which is good, the law, so that through the commandment, sin would become utterly, uh, sin would become utterly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly, sold into bondage of sin. For I do not understand what I am doing, for I do not, for I am not practicing what I want to do, but I do the very thing I hate. However, if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law that the law is good. So in other words, I know it's not right, but I do it anyway. So I, I agree with the law that it is wrong for me to do it. But now, no longer am I the one doing it, but the sin that dwells in me. For I know that good does not dwell in me. That's a really awesome, powerful statement there from Paul regarding himself. I know that good does not dwell in me, meaning the flesh. That is in my flesh, he says. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. For the good that I want, I do not do. But I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I do the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but the sin that dwells in me. I find then the principles that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully agree with the law of God in the inner person. 
but I see a different law in the parts of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, the law which is in my body parts. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body of this death? I, I'm going to give a couple things real quick. I counted the number of times that Paul used the words I, me, my, or myself from verse 9 all the way down to verse 24. And he used those words 41 times. So this is, Paul uh, is not just making a statement to the church in Rome, but he's also making a declaration of where he stands and what he's dealing with. And he's being honest with them. And I think it's important. I, you heard me say this a lot. It's important that we're vulnerable, that we're real, that we're honest, that we recognize that we have a sinful side of us. That's our flesh. And there's a war that's being waged between spirit and flesh. And it's always going to be a battle as long as we're alive in this fleshly body until we go to heaven, right? So it's always going to be at odds. And that's why it is important that we just tell the truth, that we're just honest about where we're at, that we don't fake it, like don't act like we're perfect or anything like that. I think that's part of the problem the world has with the church is they see the church preach one thing, but then they see us do another thing. And then we are very judgmental towards those who are doing the things that are wrong. But we are also in the flesh and doing things that are wrong. And so it's important that we're not hypocrites in that way. It's important that we just recognize we need Jesus, right? We need Jesus. Without him, there's no chance. And so Paul, in the first uh, part, everything that we read here, he's recognizing I'm at war. I have issues. I, ha I have, there's nothing good that lives inside of me in my flesh. Um, there is a sin nature that's in my flesh that I give in to all the time. I don't do the things I want to do, but I do the things I don't want to do. There's this war, this battle that's constantly going on inside of me. And then he ends in verse 24. This part of this scripture he ends with saying, Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this, the body of this death? Verse 25, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So immediately he brings all these, this is me, I, 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 me, 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 all my issues, all my struggles, all my battles, flesh is, is weak, sin is happening. I'm doing the things I don't want to, I'm out of order, I'm out of control. Um, I, I, I have no answers, I can't overcome this, but in one verse, 41 times he mentions me, myself, and I, and in one verse he mentions thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because as much as Paul was a mess and is sinful by nature before he met Jesus, and even after he knew Jesus, he's admitted here that I'm still dealing with this. Matter of fact, there's multiple times as I read that I, this is still in me. This flesh nature is still in me. But it's awesome how we can be so messed up and have so many issues and continually messing up, even as those who are following Jesus, and yet only one time it's mentioned Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, because that's all it took. It took one time at the cross. It took one time at, to be raised from the dead. It took one moment in time for Jesus to not only conquer sin and death of our past life, but to, to continually wash us clean as we walk with the Lord. And I think that's why it's important to be honest and vulnerable, because as I read in that little quote earlier, sin is incurable when you don't think of yourself as a sinner, when you don't see the sin, when you don't recognize it, because then how can I... Um, bring it before the Lord in repentance? How can I ask the Lord to cover it? How can I ask the Lord to help me overcome it, right? Paul is being very real, being very vulnerable. Unfortunately, what I see often with many of us as believers in the modern day, we're not like Paul. Paul is all weird and all in his sleep. This is what I am, and I'm a wretched man. He even said that, I'm a wretched man. Uh, wretched man that I am who will set me free from this body of death. So Paul's talking about his own nature, his struggle, his battles. He's the Apostle Paul. He's one of the most famous people in Scripture. He wrote most of the New Testament. And here he is wearing his wearing everything on his sleeve, being honest about where he's at. But here we are today, um, not being willing to admit that I have issues and judging everybody else who has issues. And so it's important that we recognize in ourselves that we have a sin nature that we struggle with and that I sometimes don't do the right things. And I sometimes mess up and I sometimes do things that are out of order. This seems to be a theme right recently um, from the message I spoke a couple weeks ago, not last week, but a couple weeks ago, to last week's um, Romans chapter 6 to even this week. And I think it's important because I think it's important that I recognize, Chris, um, you are a wretched man. But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, you've been forgiven. You've been redeemed. You can be restored. Um, he can make you new. He washes you white as snow. Um, that, that every single time that I fall short, I can get back up in his power and his strength because of his blood uh, that was shed for me. And then after he says, thanks be to God through Christ our Lord, 
he then says this, so then on one hand, I, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other hand, my flesh, the law of sin. So he still admits, even at the end, even though Jesus had done this work and thanks to him that I've overcome this sin, I still on one hand, hand am serving the, the law of God following Jesus. On the other hand, I'm still serving the flesh. Because as long as I'm in this earth suit, as we'll call it, the flesh, as long as I'm in this, I am going to wage war between myself right, and the Spirit of God. There's going to be this constant battle that I'm in. And I'm not going to end this battle until I'm in heaven. The good news is that is that is God's blood, uh, the blood of Christ that was shed for us, is not a temporary thing, right? It's not something that... That I'm only only at the time that I gave my life to Christ does that blood cover my sin, but it happens the entire time I walk with the Lord. But it's important that I'm real and I'm honest because real and honest and vulnerable allows me to be broken and contrite and allows me to repent and allows me to be in a place of humility so that the Lord can restore me and and recognize who I am. And I'm seeing this in Paul. I'm seeing humility here. I'm seeing recognition here of the issues that he has. And I don't know about all of you, but. I, for one, am encouraged, looking at this and reading this, that Paul wrestled with this stuff too, right? That people who were the the, the that were in the early church and accomplishing amazing things that we would hope to be able to do ourselves, and maybe sometimes don't even think it's impossible, even though it is, um, that, that they were also at times out of order and sinned and had issues. But thanks be to God through Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. We have overcome those things, but we also have to just remain broken, contrite, repentive, recognizing uh, those times when the Lord illuminates something, shines something. Sometimes it just happens um, in prayer time. Sometimes it happens when you hear a sermon. Sometimes it happens in a worship set when you're just worshiping the Lord and the Lord just shows up and show, starts showing you stuff about yourself. Sometimes it happens because you do something really bad and it's exposed, right? It comes out publicly. And how many times have we seen somebody a famous name, come out publicly, who did something really bad in the church. Somebody, And so the world begins attacking. There's another hypocrite. And, but, but what's worse is the church begins attacking as if though we're not the same person, right? We start attacking and say, I can't believe they did this. They're, person, they're terrible. They're horrible. And, and we treat them like they can't ever do anything good again. Um, but that's not necessarily true. You remember the name. Um, everybody remember the name, and I'm going to mention it. Um, Jim, Jim Baker, who was a famous preacher on, on TV and was caught in an affair and in Monday, money laundering and all kinds of other kind of stuff. It was really bad. And um, in the middle of his sin, still preaching and still and, and preaching a pretty legalistic message at that. Um, but then it gets exposed. He goes to prison. And then years later, my the church that I was going to, we went to a place called the Dream Center. I don't know if you've heard of the Dream Center, but it is a a place in Los Angeles, California. Tommy Barnett, who's a pastor in Arizona, his son started, and him, him and his son started this Dream Center. And this Dream Center took people in who were homeless or people who just all kinds of backgrounds and um, and helped them recover and restored people and stuff like that. Kind of like a life challenge, only on a much bigger scale. And this local thing, they did a lot of different things. So it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome ministry. I didn't go personally myself, but Cassie went. And, um, and Jim Baker happened to be there. He was living in the Dream Center at post post his time in prison. And from not only her, but many other people talking about it was not the same man. He was broken. He was humble. He was serving people and he was serving food to all the people and trying to he's like, I gotta do I gotta do this. This is the way he's like he's I'm not going back to do it the way I was doing it. I'm doing it this way for now, because he need to be restored. And, and that's the thing is that the Lord restores. It doesn't matter who you are. Like we can't look at somebody and say, okay, I believe you did that. You're a terrible person. You're awful. You're, while we are also vulnerable because we also have flesh. And that's what Paul's talking about. And I think the reason why Paul's even addressing this in his issue is not to expose, I have these issues. Because he was out there saying, look, I'm a wretched man. I'm a sinner. All these kind of things. But I think he was kind of also trying to remind the church in Rome that you also have these issues because you also have flesh. You also have flesh. You also are waging the same war. And there are going to be times where you're going to lose some of those battles. And when it happens, you don't need anybody to step on your hands or your face or your neck and push you down. You need somebody to gently grab your hand and lift you up and restore you. And, and so Paul is recognizing 
th these are the issues. And that's why he mentions I, me, myself 41 times before verse 25, before he mentions Jesus as being the reason and the way to get out and to become free of these things. He mentions me, I struggle. I'm dealing with this. Anybody relate to this? Am I the only one who feels like, because I feel like I relate so well to this. And um, I just think that, that that realness, that vulnerableness, that ability to stay, it keeps you humble, keeps you broken when um, when you recognize that you are just short, you're short of his glory. And um, But yet, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, that even though I've fallen short, he has overcome. Even though I have sinned and I've got issues, the Lord is gracious and he is good and he is faithful to forgive us of all of our sins. He is so good to us, even though I don't deserve it and I have this flesh that I'm dealing with. I'm so grateful for the Lord this morning um, that he can help me overcome me. And even though I still 20, I am 48 years old now. I got saved when I was, that's a long time. I've been saved 30 years. And um, even though I've been saved 30 years, I still fall flat face sometimes in, in, in my in my flesh. And yet, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we have forgiveness, that we have restoration, reconciliation. Um, so it's so good to hear this. But remember today, and I think this is really what I wanted us to remember. I think this is really what Paul wanted us to remember because he ends it by saying the words, on one hand, I myself, I, I, he'll so then on one hand, my, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. So remember that you are dealing with both laws, the law of sin and death and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Um, and you are vulnerable. And, um, but, but by walking with Jesus, by having a relationship with, I think this is one of the, um, when you t try to say, why is it important that we pray without ceasing? Why is it important that we read the word as often as we can and even listen to the sermons and listen to the word? Why is it important? Because those kind of things kind of keep us humble, keep us broken and um, keep us kind of in this place of just recognizing the standard is here. I am here. Jesus fills the gap in between, not me. Um, I can't fill that gap in between, but he fills the gap in between. He has always said, this has always said, and this gift he gives our salvation is free. Amen. Amen to that. Well, we're going to end in prayer. I'm going to go into time of prayer. I'm going to say it now and I'll say it again at the end. Um, because of the holidays and because of a couple things I have scheduled early in January, we're, this will be the last time I'm doing Jan one of these until the 18th of January. Um, the holidays are coming up next couple weeks and there's a lot going on. Um, and I got a, a lot on, the, on, the pl on my plate. So I'm going to um, focus on those things. And then I have, I have to get a colonoscopy on a Wednesday. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm publicly telling you I have to go do that nasty thing. Um, but my doctor says, I got to do it um, because I'm old, old enough where I have to go do it. And so um, there's a few other things scheduled too. So the 18th of January, we'll be back on live here. Um, until then, we will not be. Um, so um, we'll still see you on the holidays. We'll see you this next Sunday. We'll see you on Christmas, Adam, and then Christmas morning. And I know Sunday's following, but um, yeah, I got a lot going on. So I have to be able to um, take a little reprieve from this and then get back to it um, right after that. So let's let's pray. If you have any prayer requests, um, you can throw them in. And... Um, and then we'll pray. So, Lord, we thank you right now for your awesome presence. We thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for us, that you went to the cross. Um, and that blood that was poured out is not cheap. It is, it is not just a one-time thing. We give our lives to you and, you, and you wash the sin of the past away. But, Lord, as we walk with you, humbly and broken, Lord, we are still dealing with the flesh, but you are still the, the overcomer that we need. It is, it is you that helps us to overcome. It's you that changes us little by little by little. It is you who does the work that we need. And um, and, and though we do get uh, to a point where we're not uh, sitting as freely or as often, and we are doing better in time as a result of your spirit being at work in us, the flesh will still rise up in times of high pressure and stress or times of whatever difficulties we're dealing with. The flesh will always rise up here and there. 
And so, Lord, help us to recognize that we're vulnerable. Being Recognizing that we're vulnerable to that, Lord, I think helps us to understand that we can fall short. It will help us to even recognize when we do. And so I pray that we would uh, allow you to work on our hearts, allow you to minister to us, allow you to help us. Um, and that as a church and as people, that we would recognize that when somebody else falls short, we still deal with the same flesh. And so we're just as capable as they are. And because of that, even as I shared a couple weeks ago in that scripture, your scripture said when somebody falls into sin, um, restore them gently and be careful that you're not also falling into that temptation. And Lord, you say that because we are all guilty and we are all capable. So we need to restore each other when we fall into sin, not attack, not be judgmental, not be harsh. Um, it is your will that we lift each other up and encourage each other um, and spur each other on. Even your words says spur each other on, Lord, and we should do that. We are each other's greatest fans, Lord, and we just I pray that you'd help us to be that way because that makes us better. And Lord, I pray that you, you would be at work in our hearts and our lives and that your spirit would be strong in us, Lord that your spirit would overcome our weakness and that you would help us to be strong in the Lord. And um, and in, in the moments when we are weak, that you just show yourself even stronger. Lord, we pray today in Jesus' name. Um, we continue to pray. Um, again, as then he says, that we would be lights in our families, uh, that we'd be light in the dark world that we live in. Lord, you'd help us to be good examples, um, not, uh, not perfect examples, but good examples, uh, meaning that your love would shine through us that you would penetrate our hearts and that people would see you, you actively working in our lives and even with our shortcomings and our vulnerability, Lord, that people would see your love shine through and they'd see that we're very real people, but we're also uh, people who are loved by a great God and who have overcome because of you, that we would be light and darkness. Lord, we pray. We pray for Joe Migel um, as he's continually um, dealing with these issues of his health. So we're praying right now in Jesus' name that you would continue to strengthen him and encourage him. We pray right now in Jesus' name, uh, Lord, for his body and his mindset. Lord, we pray today in Jesus' name. Complete healing, we pray, pray over him in Jesus' name and complete recovery. Um, pray that he's able to get back to 100% and get back to quit being with the body again. And we pray right now for um, Mike Steiner, who is in hospice. We pray for comfort and peace for him and the family, Lord. Um, and we also, again, we always will pray, Lord, that you are a God who can heal in any situation. It doesn't matter how far gone it is, you can heal. And so we ask for healing for Mike today in Jesus' name and comfort for everybody involved. We pray today. Um, you know, we pray right now continually for a worship leader. We know that you have the right person out there and it will come at the right time. Um, we are just asking, Lord, that you would, um, that you would send that person to us. And you would also send young workers, Lord. We uh, we pray recently, and we're going to continue to pray, Lord, that you would send workers. Lord, your word says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of harvest, and he will send workers. So we're praying right now for the net that you would send workers to us, Lord. People who have a heart on fire for you, who want to serve, who want to, but who have gifts that, that we need in our church. We pray that you would send them. We pray many young leaders, young people would see opportunity to not only serve um, in the church, but see the opportunity to help us grow to a new place and um, to a new season as a church. Um, and that they would be people who would be receptive to learning and, and, and be mentored by those who have been there. Lord, we pray in Jesus name that you would just fill our house with young um, people who are hungry for you and hungry to grow and learn and hungry to serve. We pray today in Jesus' name that you would do that, Lord, um, today. Um, and pray that we'd have Sunday school teachers kids, teachers, and we'd have people to work with kids and pray that that ministry would expand and grow um, as a result of it, Lord. Today, in Jesus' name, we pray that you do that. We pray um, for Bill Gross and continued recovery and continue as he goes through um, these treatments and different things he's dealing with. Lord, we pray today in Jesus' name that you would be with him, comfort him. Um, we thank you that he is an encouragement, Lord, and it, it, that when he, uh, he is so optimistic and so um, focused on you. So we pray today in Jesus' name that you would help us to have that heart and mindset. But we pray today in Jesus' name that you touch his body and heal him of this ailment, Lord, today in Jesus' name. Um, also for Gary, uh, we pray as well. We just ask that you touch him today in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray uh, for, as a good good thing, we pray right now for your wisdom and that, that you would give us the wisdom that we need um, for life, that we would serve under the power of your Holy Spirit, that we'd be filled to overflowing with your Spirit. And as your Spirit fills us, that we'd be filled with your wisdom to make right decisions, to do the right things, 
Um, Lord, I'm first to admit there are times where I've lacked wisdom and made stupid decisions. Most of those times it was because I was struggling. And um, so I pray today in Jesus' name that we'd be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit daily. Lord, fresh outpourings of your Spirit in our life daily and just constant wisdom being poured out into our life that we would experience a revival, Lord. Um, individually and personally, we would be revived, Lord, by the power of your Spirit. I mean, or literally, as revival means awakened, you know, that we'd be awakened and alert and see um, the mission that you have for us, that we'd be filled with your Spirit. We pray for revival in the sense of the dead things coming to life, Lord, that those who are far from you would come running to you. Lord, we pray for the net to have supernatural growth, um, but that growth we want to be mostly through salvation, Lord. People who are coming who don't know you who are coming. Sure, we pray for laborers, so we ask for those. And there will be some people who will come, who will help, who will join in the in the battle. But there also will be those who are are, are currently living in sin, who don't know you, um, who come. So we pray in Jesus' name that you would draw them, that you'd fill our house with your presence, that every single time we meet, that your glory would fill the room, that every time we meet, we would have encounters with you that are life-transforming in Jesus' name, and that we would just see an explosion of your presence in the church, and that it would be from young to old, every single generation experiencing your glory and your presence, Lord, and that that would be a life-changing thing, and that those who walk through the doors visiting would be just caught up in it today, uh, caught up in it, Lord, as that happens. In Jesus' name, we pray. Well, we pray for Roger and Germany today, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to him and that he would accept that you are God, that he would receive you and surrender his heart to you. Uh, this is a prayer that we pray for so many, our family, our loved ones, my children, your children, everybody's children, Lord, grandkids, our neighbors. Um, we're just praying that, Lord, as we speak into the lives of those people around us or people that we know, including Roger, as Margaret mentions, Lord, that you'd send other people to speak. And at the right time, in the right moment, the right person would say the right words. It would all of a sudden just open eyes and cause revelation to take place, that they would receive you as Lord and surrender their hearts to you. We pray today in Jesus' name that you would do that. We recognize, Lord, that us serving is simply us saying we're available to be used by you, but and we do the work that you ask us to do. But ultimately, Lord, it's you that does um, that brings the results, Lord. We can do the work, but you bring the fruit, Lord. We can share the word, but Lord, you bring salvation, Lord. Um, we can pray for people, but you bring healing and deliverance, Lord. So we ask today in Jesus' name that you would do all the things that we are incapable of doing, healing and deliverance and salvation and bondages being broken and addictions being broken. We pray today in Jesus' name and that we would see these things happening, not only in our lives, but in the lives of every single person who walks through the doors of the net. Lord, we pray today in Jesus' name for all of us who are here online and everybody who's a part of the net. We pray for supernatural blessing, Lord, anointing, Lord, that would just pour out over us, that we'd be anointed to preach the good news and to bind up the brokenhearted and, and to um, just be your mouthpieces and your hands and your feet in the earth, that we'd filled with your glory to do that work. But also in this crazy time that we live in. I'm praying for supernatural blessing financially and health-wise, Lord, that you would just bring all the things that we need and overflowing, Lord, so that we can be even uh, do even greater things for your kingdom. We're praying in Jesus' name for the church as we um, recognize that even though we have a church building and it is a good and it is a blessing, it's time um, it's time that we start thinking about something new and different. And so that's more that's, that's better for our people and also better for growth. And so we're praying that you would help us financially with that, Lord, that we'd see supernatural provision come in um, that would allow us to be able to get into a new space at the right time. Lord, we pray for that property down the street to sell for a good price, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would work that out, all that for us today. Um, again, we just surrender our hearts to you. And Lord, I pray this prayer every day now. It's a prayer of the words that you gave me for the next year, the main focus of the prayer, Lord, is that you fill our hearts, fill these seats, and fill the streets. Lord, we pray that you fill our hearts with your presence and with your life, and it would overflow. And Lord, it would overflow into the sanctuary of the net being filled with seats, that, that, that every single seat would be filled with somebody, Lord, those who are coming to you, and that your glory would f overflow out of the house of God, out of, out of the net, and into the community, Lord, that we would see people being saved even in the neighborhood, Lord, not just in services, but in the neighborhood, or when we do outreaches, Lord, that we would just go into a crazy season of, of fruitfulness, and that you would move by the power of your spirit, Lord Jesus. We pray for Tom Nemi as he deals with the loss of his sister and the family, um, the Nemi family, Lord, we pray right now in Jesus' name for comfort for them um, as they mourn, Lord, that you just give them peace and um, give them all 
uh, you know exactly what we need when we go through things. So we're just praying that you would wrap your arms around them today and just give them peace and joy this morning and um, and help them to, um, as they cope and they deal with it, Lord, that you would be the one that gives them the comfort, Lord, because that's who you are. You are a comforter, Lord. So we just ask that, that you do that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that is it for today. It was really good being on here with you guys today. I enjoy doing this. And even though we're going to take a little bit of a break from it, like I said, we'll be back on live um, on January 18th. But between now and then, we will not be um, with the holidays and a lot happening. And I have some scheduled things that I have to do the first couple of Wednesdays of January. So um, I won't be able to be in here. But either way, we will get back to it. And we'll be in Romans chapter 8 when we do, which is, to be honest, Romans chapter 8 is my favorite. Um, it's, it's hard because the Bible is so amazing overall, but Romans chapter 8 is probably my favorite out of all of um, Scripture. I just love it. So um, we're going to be back in that on January 18th. So between now and then, um, take advantage of your time. Do do all the stuff you have to do. Spend time with the Lord um, in His Word. And um, and then we'll get back to this in a, few, in a, in a month or so. Amen. You guys have a great day. Talk to you Sunday.